of millennia, the power to conjure gold from base metal was the stuff of legend, tantalizing alchemists and scientists alike. But now, in a revelation that rewrites the rules of possibility, an American nuclear fusion startup claims to have cracked this ancient code. Our next report telling you more. For centuries, the quest for the Midas touch, the dream of transforming lead into lustrous gold, remained confined to the dusty scrolls of folklore and the fervent imagination of mystics. From jewelry to electronics, from the SIM card in your phone to space travel, and as the safest investment option, gold shines bright. The alchemist's dream has finally breached the laboratory in a move that would have stunned Newton and confounded the pharaohs. A San Francisco-based company, Marathon Fusion, claims it can transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. By harnessing the searing forces at the heart of a nuclear fusion reactor, the startup proposes it can transmute mercury or, potentially, other metals into gold using high-energy neutrons as their philosopher's stone. Marathon's plans extend beyond gold. The experiment has revolutionary potential. An endless supply of rare earths, engineered from abundant elements, and yes, the tantalizing prospect of manufacturing gold from cheaper, more common metals. While the scientific claim itself is monumental, the path to practical application is fraught with formidable obstacles. The company's breakthrough has yet to be peer-reviewed, and many point out that such processes, while scientifically valid, may be economically impractical outside the rarefied world of fusion power. The humanitarian crisis in Gaza has reached catastrophic levels, with the 21-month-old war showing extremely dim signs of ending soon. According to Gaza's health ministry, at least 25 Palestinians have died from starvation, and that's in the last 48 hours. These deaths bring the total number of people who have died from malnutrition since the outbreak of the war to 111. Aid organizations and UN officials now warn of an accelerating famine as access to food, water and medicine remains scarce for millions inside the war-torn territory. The United Nations has described the conditions in Gaza as unmatched with a level of death and destruction without parallel in recent times. The head of the UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency, Philippe Lazarni, called the situation in Gaza, and I'm quoting here, hell on earth. Palestinian health officials say that children make up the vast majority of the starvation related deaths. Of the 111 people who have died so far from hunger, at least 80 were children. And most of these deaths have occurred in the past few weeks. Children are dying from malnutrition. Infants as young as one or two months old 
are dying from malnutrition. The crossings are closed and there is no access to medicine, treatment or food. My son's condition reflects the suffering of people of Gaza. May Allah have mercy on him. He died of malnutrition. We couldn't provide food for him and his older siblings. We couldn't provide milk. He was discharged from the hospital even though he hadn't recovered. Across Gaza, desperate families are scrambling for food. Along the Rashid coastal road, hundreds gathered, hoping to receive food from passing trucks. But for many, those hopes were crushed as they returned home empty-handed, while some did not return at all. Explosions continue to light up the skies across Gaza, sending smoke plumes over the densely populated strip. As Israeli military offensive intensifies amid the bombing, displaced Palestinians said that they have no choice but to risk their lives in the search for food and water. My husband is traveling for treatment and I have five children. We are dying of hunger. There is no food. My children haven't eaten flour for a month, so I had to go out and bring it. There is shooting and death, but I have to come because my children are hungry. The United Nations now estimates that tens of thousands of women and children need emergency nutrition treatment. Humanitarian access remains heavily restricted, food supplies are dwindling, and even basic requirements are now unaffordable. The UN's World Food Programme warned earlier this month that the cost of wheat in Gaza has skyrocketed to 3,000 times its pre-war price. Its emergencies director warned that up to a quarter of Gaza's population, around 500,000 people, are now living in famine-like conditions. A statement signed by over 110 humanitarian organizations, including Mercy Corps, the Norwegian Refugee Council, and Refugees International warns of mass starvation spreading across Gaza. They allege that tons of food, clean water, and medical supplies are sitting idle just outside Gaza's borders, blocked from reaching those in need. The situation in Gaza today is drawing demonstrations globally as well. It's by trying to make Palestine a land of the land that is. In New York's Union Square, demonstrators gathered demanding an end to what they called deliberate starvation tactics. They carried placards chanted, stop starving Gaza now, and criticized the U.S. government's support for Israel's military campaign. <laughs> While in Tel Aviv, demonstrators also rallied against the blockade holding sacks of wheat and images of malnourished Palestinian children. The march, led by Jewish and Palestinian citizens of Israel, called on their government to lift the siege and allow humanitarian aid to flow freely. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Jenin, in the occupied West Bank, Palestinian women took out a rally demanding an end to Gaza starvation crisis. And amidst the mounting global pressure, demonstrators in Lebanon's Beirut also demonstrated against the growing hunger crisis in Gaza. The Israeli military released a video on social media claiming that 950, that's the total number of trucks of aid, are waiting in Gaza for international organizations to pick up and distribute it to the civilians. The Israeli government has blamed Hamas for the situation as of now in Gaza.
In Gaza today, there is no famine caused by Israel. There is, however, a man-made shortage engineered by Hamas. Now, too often, the full story is not being told. This suffering exists because Hamas has created it. The suffering exists because Hamas has made it so. As the death toll from malnutrition climbs and food insecurity worsens in Gaza, any light at the end of this dark tunnel is extremely dim. A solution remains distant as of now in Gaza. U.S. President Donald Trump's ambitious Golden Dome missile defense project is set for a major overhaul. In the latest, Trump has indicated that Tesla CEO Elon Musk may no longer be on board for building the Golden Dome, the $175 billion space-based missile defense system for the United States of America. According to a Reuters report, the Trump team is expanding its search for partners in a bid to build the Golden Dome missile defense system. Elon Musk was earlier heavily invested in the scheme of things, but now, given the very public breakdown of the Trump Musk born homie, the Pentagon is reportedly looking for new partners for the ambitious project. In April, SpaceX was leading a bid to build the Golden Dome with startups Andural and Palantir. SpaceX had proposed to build a constellation of 400 to more than 1,000 missile defense satellites. But in June, when the ties between Musk and Trump crashed, the SpaceX CEO on his platform X vented his anger. But the question right now is who will serve as Musk's replacement in the Golden Dome project? while a mixed bag of startups and big defense contractors are among the possible options. These are the ones that Trump has shortlisted so far. Number one, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos and his project Kuiper considered for its potential for missile tracking and communications, which has launched just 78 of a planned constellation of 3,000 low Earth orbit satellites. With this, the Trump administration has expressed openness to go beyond defense players and perhaps more towards commercial options. Number two, traditional defense giants, Northrop Grumman, known for uh, uh, to make space-based interceptors. Number three, Lockheed Martin and L3 Harris in demand for missile warning systems and tracking advanced tech. Besides these, White House officials have also reached out to new entrants like rocket companies, Stoke Space and Rocket Lab. But the question is, how easy or difficult would it be to replace Musk and his SpaceX, which has a track record of launching more than 9,000 of its own Starlink satellites, as well as significant experience in government procurement. For those who don't know, the Golden Dome project, dubbed as the Next Generation Missile Defense Initiative by the Trump administration, was launched earlier this year in a bid to detect aerial threats faced by the U.S. from China, Russia and other countries. The Golden Dome is said to be built into a larger and more complex system with multiple layers of defense in a bid to handle incoming missiles and low-altitude threats and even from space. As for the U.S. president, something which requires assistance of a vast network of satellites. And if all goes according to the plan, the dome should be operational in about three years. That's by the end of Trump's time in office. As of now, time is ticking. Well, days ago, we told you in Gravitas how U.S. President Donald Trump insisted on soft drink brand Coca-Cola using real cane sugar in its drinks. And it turns out Trump's wish became Coca-Cola's command. For real, 
which now plans to add a cane sugar version of its trademark drink to American stores. Here's what happened. In a social media post last week, Trump said that the beverage giant should make a switch to cane sugar from corn syrup, which went as a sweetener into the Coke since the 1980s. Now, Coca-Cola had said back then that it was assessing its options as of now. And on Tuesday, Coca-Cola chairman and CEO James Quincy said that Coke will expand its uh, product range to reflect consumer interest in differentiated experiences. Basically, the same happiness in a bottle, as Coke would say, with a twist. He also said that the company plans to launch uh, the latest version of Coke by later this year. However, Quincy noted that Coke has long been using cane sugar in global markets and other specialty drinks such as Mexican Coke, Simply Lemonade and Honest Tea. And now the iconic Coca-Cola will join this list. With this, the cane sugar sweetened Coke joins a trend led by its rivals PepsiCo and DR Pepper, which have offered sugar sweetened alternatives in the US since 2009. Well, many are hailing this as a refreshing change from the corn syrup version, which is high on fructose levels. All said and done right now, experts suggest that the intake of any kind of soft drinks must be limited in a bit to avoid adverse health impacts such as weight gain, type 2 diabetes, heart diseases and others. Well, scammers are increasingly using AI, artificial intelligence, to conduct various types of fraud, creating a new wave of concern for individuals and institutions alike. If you find yourself worried about such scams, then you are not alone. The alarm bells are ringing at the highest levels. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman has issued a stark warning, stating, that AI tools, especially those capable of duplicating voices, they pose a serious risk to the banking sector. Speaking at a Federal Reserve Conference in Washington, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said that the rise of AI-generated voice technology could easily overwhelm the banking systems, especially those that depend on voice-based authentication. Very nervous about this. A thing that terrifies me is apparently there are still some financial institutions that will accept a voice print as authentication for you to like move a lot of money or do something else. You say a challenge phrase and they just do it. Um, that is a crazy thing to still be doing. Like AI has fully defeated that. AI has fully defeated most of the ways that people authenticate currently other than like passwords, but all of these like fancy, you know, take a selfie and wave or do your voice or whatever. Um, I am very nervous that we have an impending, a significant impending fraud crisis because of this. Altman warned that modern AI tools can easily replicate someone's voice using just a few seconds of an audio clip, allowing scammers to impersonate customers and gain unauthorized access to their bank accounts. OpenAI CEO has urged financial institutions and regulators to move away from voice-only authentication, suggesting that they should rather implement more advanced multi-factor verification methods, to name some, using combinations of passwords, device recognition, biometrics, and even behavior-based tracking in a bit to confirm customer identity and more security in this situation. People are going to have to change the way they interact they're gonna to have to change the way they verify like this person calling me right now it's a voice call soon it's gonna be a video facetime It'll be indistinguishable from reality